Let's look at how we create simple requests using the HTTP request client in order to retrieve data from the internet. Recall that inside of our search page, we've got a button down here after our app text field, uh, here it is, that allows us to search for properties. So if we go down to that function search, then we can fill in an HTTP request. Now this is the incorrect way to structure this, but I'm just doing it here to show you the nuts and bolts of the request itself. We're going to restructure all of this a little later on in this module. So the first thing we need to know about is this, the HTTP request object. And this allows us to get, post, delete, all the usual HTTP methods that we're used to. So we're going to get something. And what are we going to get? Well, this expects us to pass in a URL that it's going to get stuff from. So instead of using our property URL, we're going to use one of my favorites, which is a test URL that allows us to get uh, HTTP results for a random subject. And this is at JSON placeholder dot tippy code dot com forward slash posts and if you go to that particular URL you'll notice that it passes us some JSON data okay so once it goes and retrieves that because this is JavaScript we're going to return back to this function, we're going to return a promise, and we're going to have a then statement. We're going to run a function that contains those results, hopefully. And let's put this function in line here. So let's just line all of this stuff up. I hate unlined stuff. I think it's a programmer's OCD thing. So what are we going to do with these results? Well, we want to get the content of these results. And that we're going to put into a variable called content, which comes from results.text. Now, this might not actually exist. So it's a good idea here to run a try catch statement. So we're going to try something. If it fails, we can catch the error as it falls through. So what are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's console.debug. Uh, I always press enter at the wrong time. Console.debug our content so we can actually see it in our debugger. And then we're going to try, this is the bit that could fail, var object is equal to, we're going to try and turn that JSON into an object. So the way we do that, you might be familiar with this, is to use the JSON library dot parse and pass in that content. So if the JSON is correctly formed, then it's going to create an object for us. And the object will take whatever form the JSON's in, arrays, lists of objects, etc., etc. Okay, and the reason, uh, if you're new to programming, that we put this in a try statement is because we don't know what we're going to get back from the server or if we're going to get anything at all, if the server's still there. So if we try to run this on non-existent data from the server, we would get an error and our whole application would crash. So after we've tried, if we have an error, we want to catch that error or that exception. And we're going to do something with that. Console dot, we can actually have this as an error. And we'll say something helpful to ourselves, such as could not pass server response, perhaps as JSON, because that's what's going to fail. And then if that doesn't work, well, we're going to return out this function because we don't want to continue with it, because obviously our data doesn't work. But if it does work, we'll have ourselves another little console.debug. And what are we going to have here? Let's just have success passing JSON data. Okay, now that should all work, but assuming something doesn't work, after the, the then, we can have another catch. So this isn't part of this try catch. 
Rather, it's a function of this then here. Okay, so if something goes horribly wrong, we can catch the error from this, open and close our curly braces, line everything up, and then what are we going to do with that error? Well, we better tell ourselves that it exists, console.debug, and let's have failed, and let's give ourselves the error. So we can actually print that error in the console.debug. I don't know what comes with the error, nothing suggested, so we'll just leave it as that. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit Control S, Command S, and save that. Let's run that in the live debugger. And so now, when we click that search button, it's going to go to that placeholder.tippy code. So let's click go. And there we have it. We have first, we, well, last, we have success passing JSON. That's to be expected. And if we scroll all the way up, we can see all the data and we have no other messages. So that works brilliantly. That is basically how we go and retrieve data from the internet. Now, coming back to what I said earlier about if we put this HTTP request in here, and it's a fairly generic request, you know, you're quite often you'll go and try to get JSON data from somewhere. So having it in a particular page, the search page, is not very convenient. What if you want to use the same function somewhere else? You want to retrieve some other data somewhere else? it's obviously much more useful to put this kind of code into a client. And when we start to do that in the next lecture, we'll start to look at how to actually structure our QML Qt vPlay apps in a way that's recommended, first of all, by Qt developers everywhere and is an accepted uh, practice in doing so. And of course, there are some logical advantages in doing so. Okay, so let's get on with the next lecture.